Shalom and welcome to the Rashi Nash. I'm Pastor Matt. I'm flying solo with you this week to give you a special announcement. And that is, as many of you know, I am leaving this Thursday, the 4th, going on a very large mission trip for our ministry for Ahavat Ami International and Yeshivat Shuvu. Uh, I will be starting off in France, then going to Belgium and Holland, perhaps Germany, and then down into Zimbabwe. So many, many exciting things are happening. And the reason I wanted to do this like this this week is because I'll be joining you solo for the next few weeks because I'm going to take you with me on my trip and I'm going to do some recording of the Rashi Nash at Rashi's synagogue and perhaps at his original burial place. So I'll be going to the city where he did so much great work and I want to take you along with me. So that's what we're going to be doing. So something a little bit out of the ordinary today, not just that I am alone with you without my wife, uh, she's fine, but I just wanted to do something a little different this week. I wanted to share with you uh, a new book that I have added to my library. It's called the JPS Rashi Discussion Torah Commentary. It's by Stephen and Sarah Levy. It's a beautiful book. As you can see, it's, it's quite large. And it's really interesting because there are discussion questions for every Torah portion. It gives a, a bit of background on what Rashi says for a particular Torah portion, and then gives you some things to think about, and then some questions for discussion. And it's really quite interesting because not only is it a series of questions for discussion on the Torah portion itself, but also this particular one, this is Parashat Korach. And for this Torah portion, it actually goes into a bit of a lesson on the United States Constitution and how that fits into this week's Torah portion. It's really quite interesting. So anyway, just wanted to do something a bit special with you this week. So let me read to you from this uh, Torah discussion, the JPS Rashi discussion Tor Torah commentary. Let me tell you what it says here. It says that Rashi explains why the tribe of Reuben joined in Korach's rebellion. As you know, Korach had a band of people together with him, a band of men that rebelled with him. But why was it that the tribe of Reuben joined? Well, what it says here about Datan and Aviram, since the tribe of Reuben made its camp in the south, neighboring Kohath and his sons, who also camped in the south, they joined with Korah in his dispute. Woe to the wicked and woe to his neighbor. Rashi notes that the tribe of Benjamin's physical proximity to Korah influenced the tribe's members to join in Korah's rebellion. What an interesting insight that is. Consequently, it is important to exercise vigilance regarding neighbors who might exert a negative influence. Think about that. I have a good friend who happens to be a mayor. And a long time ago, he would travel around to schools. As a younger man, he was a musician and he used to travel around singing music at middle and high schools. And as he would sing his songs, he would also give a talk, uh, a motivational talk to the students. And two things that he always liked to say is that attitude determines altitude. Think about that. How high you rise in life, in your chosen endeavor, in your career, in your mission, in your calling, how high you go is dependent upon your attitude because the only person that can really stand in your way is yourself. If you allow those doubts to come in, those thoughts from the enemy, you can talk yourself out of just about anything. So attitude determines altitude. The other thing you used to say is this, friends are like elevators. If you're watching from the UK, you might say friends are like lifts. They either take you up 
or they take you down. It is true in our lives. The people that we hang around with, the people that we associate with, the people that we do business with, the people that we are in relationships with will take us up or take us down. And isn't it interesting that as far as Korah's rebellion, it says here that because of the proximity of Reuben to Korah, it was like a cancer. That attitude spread. Now, here's what's interesting. In this commentary, since it's meant for, meant for discussion, it has a couple of discussion questions that I want to bring up to you. When deciding to move to your current neighborhood, did you consider who your neighbors would be? Did you find out anything about them in advance? Are your neighbors different than what you had expected? It's a very interesting series of questions. Now, another discussion question is this, and I find this quite telling. Describe the Jewish community in your neighborhood. Now, you might be living in a place where there aren't many Jewish people or any Jewish people at all. I happen to live near a sizable Jewish community. But here's what it says. If Jews are numerous, does this tend to promote a sense of Jewish peoplehood or provoke rebellion or both? Do you believe Jewish people should make the effort to live among other Jews in order to foster Jewish community? You know, the same could be said for us in our faith community as believers in Yeshua. Should we try to live in proximity to other believers, people who are of like mind and heart and spirit? Do you think that has a positive outcome? Do you think that it benefits us to live in community with others of like mind? I think there's a lot to be said about this. On the one hand, there is strength in numbers. And if we are around one another, we can give each other strength and encouragement. However, if we're only around others that are exactly like us, sometimes we can live in what we could call an echo chamber. And sometimes we don't have experiences with people outside our own bubble, outside our own circle. And that can be negative as well. If you're only around people that agree with you or people that believe exactly the way that you do, well then what mission can you have among them? I mean, obviously you can strengthen and disciple and things like that when you're among other believers, but when there are people that live around you, you have a tremendous opportunity to be a light to those. There was a pastor who was a bishop in my church denomination for many years, a very gifted man, wonderful pastor. He's still around and still in ministry. And he preached a sermon one time in our church that had this title, what is it like to live next door to a Christian? Well, we could say it like this. What is it like to live in the same neighborhood as a believer in Yeshua? What is it like to live next door to a believer? Well, if you're the believer in your neighborhood and your neighbor is not, maybe the question could be asked of them. What's it like to live next to that believing neighbor, that person who is a believer in the Messiah? For those of you that practice Messianic Judaism, what's it like to have someone that practices a form of Judaism in their neighborhood, in their community, maybe living next door to them? What is it like to have a coworker that is a believer? What should it be like? I think these are all very good questions. So you pray for me as I go on this very long journey for almost the entire month of July. Once again, I leave on the 4th of July and I come back on the 30th. So you keep me in prayer and I will keep all of you in prayer as I take you along on the journey and God willing, film some very special Rashi Nash videos where Rashi actually lived. If you can imagine, this man, this man that we study every single week on the Rashi Nash was born in the year 1040. Can you imagine going all the way back to the medieval times in France? 
this incredible sage of the Torah and the Talmud, this wonderful scholar of the Word of God. Hopefully, with God's help, I'll have some videos for you to see, and it will be very exciting. So thank you once again, as always, for joining me, usually with my wife, Kara. She sends her love and regards, and let's go on a journey together. And I do recommend, even though I just got it, I've only had a couple of days to look at it, I do recommend this wonderful book, the JPS Rashi Discussion Torah Commentary. It might be a good addition to your library. This might be something really cool to discuss around your family table on Friday night for your Arab Shabbat meal. It, it might be a, a wonderful addition to your family time. Thank you once again for joining me. I'll be praying for you. You pray for me as we journey on together. Many blessings to you and your family. Shalom.